Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. We got something a little different for you today. No actual gameplay, but we're going to be here discussing the developer update that was announced for Dead by Daylight to be coming in the near future. Don't know exactly when it's coming out, but there is a lot of changes. So I figured I kind of wanted to give my take on a lot of the stuff since it's going to be a little bit different from what you're used to seeing on there, especially with a lot of like UI changes and everything. So I just wanted to give my take on that. Also give you guys a place to put whatever you think about the update in the comments. We can talk about it. Tell me what you like, what you don't like. And I know I mentioned in my previous video about a schedule trying to start on here. Looks like we are going to have a schedule, but maybe go around the Monday, Wednesday, Friday instead of uh, what I originally had planned. So be on the lookout for that. Hopefully that starts with this video that should go up on Monday, but just wanted to get into this. Let's uh, go ahead and get started. So with this, I'm just going to go from the top down basically as the articles laid out. First thing is the clown gameplay update. So normally clown has time bottles which he throws down survivor runs through it they get slowed might have a status effect applied to it as well now he is getting a, an additional thing called the after piece antidote and what this basically does is it throws down a bottle it's a gray cloud at first and then it turns yellow once it's yellow any player that moves through it gets a speed boost so he has also his tonics and this so he has a speed and a slow uh, i guess their uh thing with this is to try to make it a little bit more uh, choices being made by the survivor like hey do I go run through this yellow uh, tonic to get faster or do I go to a different tile to try to get to a pallet or something I guess they want more choices there uh, also if you run through like a yellow tonic to get a speed or a yellow antidote to get a speed boost and then you hit one of his pink tonics you just cancel the speed boost you won't get slowed so I guess there's supposed to be just some more outplay potential mind games that maybe a clown can do on this I don't really know if it's good or not. I've never played clown, so I feel I can't really speak on the character. Any clown players, feel free to let me know what you think about this initial thing. Uh, it is nice to see that he gets not just like a buff to like uh, speed or anything, that they actually are trying to do something different with the gameplay. So I like to see that. Uh, but yeah, that, that one, I have no idea if it's going to be good or not. All right, the next thing that we have on here and probably one of the biggest changes is the HUD update. Now, the HUD has been pretty much the exact same ever since the game has come out, and we are getting a lot of different changes. First, I'll go over the changes, and then I'll say what I specifically like and don't like. So if we're just looking at this one, the killer POV, uh, you see character portraits have been replaced uh, instead of being that just like little white ominous silhouette uh, it's now the actual portraits you have up there you also have a hook counter that is going to be next to them which is how many times they've obviously been hooked uh, the way that this works for killer is you now get a little bit of positive reinforcement this bar fills every time you get a hook it's basically dead by daylight just saying hey you don't fucking suck at the game good job uh, i don't know if it's needed but uh then we also have this right here which is the generators remaining has now been moved to the top perks are still obviously in the bottom right your power still down there and then this is where your item or uh whatever ability you would have goes like huntress right here has hatchet so if i look at the survivor pov you can see right here they sh they show their key right here still the gens are the same they can show the people down here and everything uh i have a lot of feelings about this i can respect what they're trying to do i personally don't like it at all uh at least for me if i was thinking as a game developer i would want to have people look like at the least amount of spots possible where we have our normal uh ui right now if we if we probably get an image up on it in the bottom left right let's just say from a survivor pov you have your people's image you can see where they've been hooked you have your generator counter and you have your item right there so that is all in the bottom left corner right in the bottom right corner you have your perks all right that that's always going to be there and then above the stuff in the bottom left is where you're going to be getting like your points if you've like evaded chase or if you're a killer if you like hook someone that's where your points are going to show up and then on the right side of the screen is where you're going to have things like status effects if you're exhausted blinded right there so you really only have to look in pretty much two positions on the entire screen the bottom left and the bottom right with an exception of kind of the middle-ish parts of the screen for the points and uh exhaustion effects and stuff like that now with this new one you have to look all over the place, okay? So just looking at this image, or if I can put some of the, the video footage up on there, right? You're looking at the top for the character portraits, right? As a survivor, also, the bleed out bar is super, super small, making it a lot harder to see when they're going to be going into like a second state on a hook or something. The generators are at the top. I'm not too sure why that needs to happen. Uh, when it comes to the killer, they have that hook progress thing. That's another thing that I just think you don't need to look at on the screen. It's not really needed. The, the ability and the items are in the bottom left. You have to look at the bottom right. 
and then also in the top right is where stuff like your points and everything are going to go so it it's just like you're looking all over the place i don't know if you're you're trying to focus on the game yet you have elements of the game on literally every single part of your screen i don't think that that's a good uh good use of space for the for the screen making it easier for the survivor or the killer to kind of look at things i just think it makes it look more cluttered i know that they're saying that the old ui in hud doesn't make it to where they can put in new things on the game but me personally i don't like it at all uh and another specific thing like yes you have character portraits on there i don't know if it changes with like the outfit they're wearing but what if you had a team of four jakes or for Nancy's, how do you descend, essentially tell who's been hooked or who hasn't been hooked, really? You're still going to have some difficulties on there. Uh, me, personally, I just don't think the HUD is going to be that great. Like I said, minimalist stuff is makes it a lot better, uh, and it also doesn't block out your view of anything else. But when you have bottom left, bottom right, top left, top right, middle left, top top, like, I, I just feel like there, it's way too much clutter. Uh, I'm, I'm not, like, super upset about it, but, like, I don't like it at all really however another thing i will say just really quickly is that they do have a ui scaling option if you want it to be bigger or smaller so i guess that is a little bit on the plus side but again i just think there's way too many elements on the screen to begin with the next thing that we have coming up is survivor animation changes and they're basically saying is updating what's old they're trying to take it in a more realistic direction which again i don't know if i really agree with that i mean the game's kind of a little bit cartoony to begin with so uh, I, I don't know if you need to have realistic animations, but uh, basically in this, your survivor is going to have more fluid and stuff. So you're not going to just have like a run animation, then just immediately stop. I, I guess you're going to like, it's going to look like you're actually slowing down, like the dying state's going to look a bit, a little bit better. I don't know if this is like a thing that they actually have planned for changes, but I know that they showed in the video a little bit of different spots to where you can actually like shoot your flashlight through actual gaps of things and actually get blinds on it it looks like it's shining through if that's the case that's a really good change because you would think if there's if there's like a, an opening between something you would be able to shine it through to maybe get an angle for a flashlight save so if that's in there that's pretty good uh the animations look a little, <laughs> little funny to me at least at the moment i might just take a second to get used to they said the movement itself won't feel any different it's mostly animation work technical animation but one of the goals was to not change the actual gameplay and how locomotion and navigation works in terms of uh, speeds, turn rates, accelerations, and things like that. So but that that's something that I'm, I'm okay with, and it might just take a little bit of a second to get used to it, but I do like if that's the thing where they're showing the flashlights going through that, that would be a really good change. All right, everybody, now we're on the matchmaking and rank rewards section, and let's be honest, matchmaking has not been Dead by Daylight strong suit over the years. They even had a new matchmaking like skill-based system that they implemented like last August or so for a little bit. Didn't go exactly as planned. I know specifically when I played, I was going against people who were way, way, way lower than my skill level. Not to say that I'm at the highest, but they were clearly very new players. Players and it kind of made it unfun after a while just constantly running around with like no challenge but with this when we look at this right here the rank system is actually going to be completely removed so we're going to read this right here at the top matchmaking ratings are returning in the near future we've been hard at work tweaking the system since our last year and are preparing to re-enable skill-based matchmaking for another test and it says that's not all we're happy with matchmaking ratings and turn the system on for good we'll be introducing rank rewards so ranks will no longer be used for matchmaking right here. So these do not matter at all. So like if you're a rank one, you're not going to be going up necessarily against rank ones. That's not a clear uh, indicative measure of your actual skill level. It's going to be measured on whatever Dead by Daylight has put in as their MMR system or whatever. So going up as like normally when you're playing rank ones you would tend to probably go up against people who are in the red ranks like that won't matter now because this is just a reward emblem now i guess you could consider it like these are just meant to show what you what rewards you get at that specific uh level so they don't mean your rank anymore but with this i think when you do implement things like skill-based matchmaking you want to kind of have some better rewards because if you look here 250,000 blood points if you get to if you reach one over the entire month you don't have to stay at one it says the highest rank they've reached but you can probably get 250,000 blood points in like five to ten games 
uh, with the correct offerings and stuff on there. So, I mean, really, is it worth grinding all the way there to get something that you've probably gotten 10 times over just from you playing the video game to get to there? And that's your reward at the end. I don't necessarily know if that's like a great incentive. I know League of Legends does it really well. Like, we're not even at the highest rank, right? You're at gold, which is literally the middle of the pack. You get a exclusive skin that you actually get to have right there. And I know people who are in like Challenger get uh, more exclusive stuff like the top 25 people got uh, sent like cool jackets from Riot themselves. I think those are like really, really cool incentives to get people to actually play uh, the game a little bit more. It also works, uh, the skill-based matchmaking in a game like League of Legends is because there's multiple game modes, right? You have your normal play, you have your ranked play, you have your ARAMs, and you also have usually like an event mode where you can play, you don't have to continuously play ranked. With Dead by Daylight, there's only one mode that you're playing, so your skill base is going to be literally just in that area, right? I mean, the only difference is, is you have your survivor and your killer. So skill-based matchmaking, right? If you're continuing to do better in the game, you're going to be going up against people who are also doing better on the opposite role that they're playing. So you're basically, if you're really good, you're going to have to continuously sweat your ass off each and every game, which is not necessarily the most fun. Me personally, I don't like that. I like to meme around quite a bit. So I, I really don't like constantly having to try and try and try and try super hard each game. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, don't get me wrong. Some people love that. But that personally is just not for me. And I know a lot of the skill based systems that companies have introduced have not been the greatest. Like I know EA has been shown that they will specifically put you in, you know, your skill base and then like one or two games, they'll put you specifically with people who are much lower or much higher if you are a low skill to make it so where you probably lose the game because that's apparently the best way to incentivize a player to keep playing their game. I'm not a huge fan of that that real, uh, that tactic that uh, a lot of companies employ. I don't know if that's how Dead by Daylight's going to do it, but I don't really like how skill base is going to go. I think the matchmaking is going to be pretty much the same, right? If people get high and they don't want to be high anymore, they're going to probably throw and that's going to make the the rankings essentially the same as they were before just now you don't have that little rank icon meaning that specific thing so uh that's how i feel about matchmaking well i guess we'll just have to see until it gets implemented again i don't have the highest of hopes but i am hoping that maybe this one is a little bit better than what we've had previously and yeah i'm just yeah i'm hoping for the best and now we have the graphics update where we're updating some more maps i do like that they're making them look a little bit nicer and a little bit more spooky i guess in some aspects but i kind of liked how at least for like the original ones like auto haven was always green mcmillan was a blue cold one kind of had like a yellow feel to it and now it feels like everything's kind of getting changed up as long as the lighting's good then i'm okay with that some maps do get pretty pretty dark and hard to see so you have to lower your graphics to make them better but we're getting uh upgrades to crotus pren and uh the gideon meat plant which we just have screenshots i think crotus looks really really cool uh this is obviously the little like one loop that has the the little bubble where you can jump out one window one windows block this is the entrance to the big building right here i like that it looks like it's been burnt down a little bit that's really cool the meat plant the game is way better in my opinion because that shit is so damn dark it's so hard to see like you have to put your stuff on low to be able to see stuff so i like that they changed a little bit of the color it looks like it's just like a dimly lit kind of green hue down here and then you have this kind of like cold blue kind of tinge on there and the and the upstairs that makes it a little bit nicer as well that map just sucks i don't think anyone likes that map in particular so it is nice to see that now we are going with just a little bit of miscellaneous balance changes first off with the wraith that's my favorite killer so uh it is a little bit of a buff for the wraith so they basically you can see the wraith's shimmer uh when he's moving making it you know a little bit easy to see him if he's coming around a corner even if you don't have a spine chill necessarily so Basically, they've changed his shimmer to where it's completely invisible beyond 24 meters. It's somewhat visible between 24 and 16, and it's unchanged when within 16. So it's going to make it a little bit harder for people to see him. Uh, obviously, a lot of people take spine chill, so you're still going to see his path if you're taking that uh, regardless. But it is a nice little change, at least for him to maybe get the jump on survivors. Next up, the trapper, the trap escape mechanic has been changed. Normally, it's a percentage based chance so you have a 25 percent chance to escape a trap on each attempt it sounds simple as they say but it only adds up to roughly a uh four attempts only adds up to like a 68 percent chance to escape it's kind of a weird thing you could get out on your first try or you could never get out it's just a really weird so they've set it to a flat number distribution so it's between one in six attempts to escape from a trap 
So what they say right here is between one to three attempts, the chance to escape is lower than what you would have before with the 25%. At four attempts, it's roughly the same. Between five and six, the chance to escape is higher. So the higher you go, obviously more chance you have. When you step in the trap, we choose whether it be one, two, three, four, five, or six, and then that's how many times it will take. So it's never gonna take more than six. This does mean that your rough chance of escaping each time is 16%. So the first attempt is gonna be a little less likely, but it will never go to the long tail on the other side either. You can so still escape at one, two, or three, just that it's gonna be a little bit harder to uh, escape from, from those uh, a little bit more so. But I think it's obviously meant to know if the survivor is gonna escape or to tell the trapper like, hey, will I make it there in time based on when they got trapped? So it seems like a decent uh, change to me. Deep wounds have also been changed. So it's saying the once reasonable 30 second timer now seems a little too generous. Uh, they're simplifying deep wounds. It's now 20 seconds long, regardless of how it was applied. Uh, Legion add-ons that remove deep wound time have been adjusted accordingly. So they, they did that as well. Um, basically adding a little bit more urgency to mend uh, and basically it's still going to be the same where like if you're in a chase you don't have to mend but once you get out of chase uh you can't like you know run to a super super safe spot of the map always you kind of have to start your mending process a little bit earlier next change one of my favorite perks diversion it's basically everyone likes to throw pebbles right i'm i have fun nothing better than throwing a rock right in the face of a killer uh it's basically we're saying that they should have more pebbles so they're reducing the time that it takes to activate diversion i think that's good <laughs> I, I mean I'm, I'm i'm down with that for sure then on fixated, it says, don't you hate it when you get so hard that you forget how to walk slightly faster? Us two fixated will now remain active even if you're injured. Apparently, uh, it didn't work when injured, so now that it now it does work, so that should make sense. All right, the next change is for Hex Undying, which is one of the most popular perks. The change kind of confuses me a little bit, but it was probably the most popular perk setup to run was Hex Undying and Ruin. So essentially, it was transferring uh, the, the Hex just a bunch of different times. So if someone cleansed Ruin and Hex Undying was still active, uh, the Ruin would just take on the position of Adult Totem. So you could have basically four different iterations of, of your Ruin coming through at all and it was it was it was super super hard and it was really really strong you also had aura reading on totems so that made it basically able for you to tell as soon as a survivor gets on totem hey probably should stomp that and it made the the whole like process really hard and it just kind of limited also the other perks that the killers were using because they just kind of defaulted into running undying and ruin so their changes to it have said anytime a hex totem is cleansed it will replace the hex undying totem Hex and Dying is then deactivated. This ensures the first totem cleansed is never your other hex perk. So I'm assuming, let's just say you have Undying and Ruin. You cleanse one totem. It doesn't cleanse the Ruin. It cleanses the Undying, right? So then it gets deactivated so that it makes your other totem the, the Ruin instead. So you don't know which one's which. But if you have two, you just know that the first one cleansed will not be your Ruin. If, if that's what I'm looking at this if that's what they're trying to say and it says any tokens you've accumulated are now kept when the hex perk trans transfers totems this way you're not starting from scratch part way through a match uh, i don't really understand that to be honest and aura reading only applies on dull totems which is a little bit better right because it just allowed Killers to just kind of camp their hex totems and make it a little bit harder. And it is good to get it uh, changed. Hopefully people will run other perks for now. Iron Maiden getting a pretty decent buff coming out of a locker. 30 seconds of exposed status. They said like basically uh, it was a little hard to get to a survivor maybe in 15 seconds and hit them. Uh, it's still I assuming getting the four seconds of the aura that you see of a survivor once they exit the locker. But now they are exposed for 30 seconds which is pretty good. I definitely assume we'll see some uh, huntresses taking that for sure. Okay, so they're changing open-handed, which honestly, I had to look up what open-handed did because I don't know if I've ever ran that perk before. So it's basically, it increases your aura reading abilities. Right now at tier three, it releases, uh, it increases it by eight meters. So what it is now doing is it's increasing it to 16 meters at tier three, but limiting, limiting it to only having one open-handed at a time to prevent it from getting out of hand. So I assume if, is if you had it stacked, you would get uh, for four people. I guess you would have 32 meter increased if they're if they're all alive or something. I'm not too sure, but uh, yeah, it's a 
it's a weird perk. I've never really ran it too much. I don't really see this change as making me want to run it. But hey, maybe I will. Uh, but yeah, that's a that's a change, I, I guess. And then a super simple one here at the end is they're uh, reducing the time that it takes for second wind to heal you after being unhooked. Again, I've never really used second wind too much. There's just a lot of better perks that you can use beside it. But it is nice to have uh, a little bit of that change uh, to that perk to make it maybe a little bit better for some people. And that is all of the changes that are on here. Again, like I said, there is some good with like the balancing and, and some of the other stuff like the animations and whatnot. But I really dislike the HUD just because of how how cluttered it makes the game feel. And I'm also not a fan really of the skill based matchmaking because I don't see it really having that much positive side here i feel like the negatives are definitely still outweighing the positives in this situation but again you guys can let me know this is just a little bit of a random video i wanted to throw together hopefully you guys enjoyed if you did drop a like comment and subscribe we'll get back to our regular scheduled programming of gameplay uh in the next vid and i will talk to you guys in the next one peace